Hi guys, Julian and Claire, Jane Claire with you again at Stocks and Outdoor Centre and we're on our knots and lashes part three today. So we've already looked at the overhand knot or the stopper knot and do you remember that was our over and our under and through. Really useful for a big chunky rope like this where it's frayed at the end to stop that fraying even more. We also looked at doing that twice to make even more of a knot. So that was where we went over under through and we went over under through a second time so you end up when we pull that together with an even bigger knot and the third part of that was the um, overhand knot on a bite so we folded our rope over and then imagined that that was one rope where we went over under and pulled the bite through and that gave us that little loop in part two we looked at the clove hitch hope you've been practicing that if you did your fishy in the dishy we went right on top of left remember we twisted it right on top of left again to make two mickey mouse ears or two fishies in dishes so the fish goes in the dish and that was our clove hitch that we could put over our pole well today as promised we're going to look at how to make a washing line to put a tarp over a plastic sheet over to make your own shelter. So I'm going to show you two knots. The first knot's nice and simple. The second one's got a few variations to make your washing line even tighter. So let's start with the first knot. Now this is called the timber hitch and quite often it was used even hundreds of years ago to attach to a piece of wood to pull but if there's no tension on it it can come undone very easily. It's a great knot to start your washing line off because later on when you're putting things away it's very easy to undo. So we're going to get your rope and we're going to go around the tree. Now we're actually going to take your, your working end and go back over the other end. So you can see what we've done. As we've come around, we've gone over and back under. I always say that that locks the rope. Now obviously that's not going to go it. That's going to come undone really easily. So what we do now is wrap it around itself. Now can you see this is the part that we're wrapping it round. So you're wrapping it round itself. And we like to do things three times in the woods. So once, twice, three times, just to make sure it's secure. If you've got a, a real rough rope like mine is fluffy, you probably only need to do it twice. If you've got a smooth rope, you might need to do it maybe four or five times. Now that's because we want there to be a lot of friction friction's a force where things rub together. If we look now, there's a lot of friction with this rope wrapped around itself. Now, at the moment, if I pull that, that will come undone fairly easily. So what we're going to do is put the um, loop there against the tree, and the washing line direction is gonna come out at about 90 degrees. Now, 90 degrees is our L angles. We can all make those 90 degrees. So if you can see my straight line, and I'm going to pull that back at about 90 degrees to the tree. There's my 90 degree angle. Can you see that easily? My 90 degree angle. Now, as that hugs against the tree, you can see, with all my weight on it, my big breakfast in my belly, that that's going to hold. Yet if I loosen it, it's really easy to undo. So let's go through that again for the timber hitch. I'm going to go around the other side this time to show you it doesn't matter which way we do it. Go around the tree, over and under. Do you remember we said we're locking it? Okay, if you come around this way with the camera, we can see that what do I have to do now? Wrap it around itself. Really important, you wrap it around itself. Can you see how that's the same piece of rope? So don't wrap it around this one, wrap it around itself. And remember, you go for three times once. Twice, third one for luck. Now, remember the final part is to push that loop back to the tree, and here's my right angle. Can you see my right angle? If I hold it here, it does slide round a fair bit. But if I pull that back nice and tight, there we go. So that's my timber hitch. Now, I need to get my washing line, so I'm gonna find another tree. We're gonna go over here. <laughs> Careful I don't get a rope burn in my rope. And the second knot is called a round turn and two half hitches. 
Now I'm going to show you the basic round turn and two R pitches and then some little tricks to make your washing line really tight. So the way I teach this is that we always do a round turn. So can you turn around with me? And then hold two fingers up. So round turn and two half hitches. So the first thing we're going to do is go round the tree. So I'm going to walk around the tree of the rope. It's quite a long rope actually. Just pick up all the ends so we don't trip over them. So walk around the tree. And as I walk around the tree, I'm pulling it as tight as I can. Now if you look, has that gone all the way around the tree? No, it hasn't. There's a gap in the middle. So I'm going to go under and carry on around. And that is our round turn. It's almost like you've gone round twice. But you can see now that the tree has definitely been covered in rope. That's our round turn. Now our half hitches are just like the overhand knot that we looked at in part one. Do you remember what we used to say for doing that? over, under and through. So I'm going to throw my rope over and it creates a nice little hole and my rope's going to go under and through. Let's pull that out. Quite a long rope today. Pull all of that out. Oh, that's a lot of effort. And pull that back to the tree. Now one mm -hmm. half hitch you can see is going to loosen very easily. So remember our knot was a round turn and two half hitches wasn't it so we're going to do that again over throw it all over oh, there we go remember when we throw it over it creates a hole so your rope can then go under and back up through the hole let's pull all of that through and pull that next to the first half hitch so now we've got a round turn and two half hitches, two half hitches. There we go. Now at the moment my washing line's a little bit wobbly, that's not too bad to be honest, but I've got some tricks to make it even tighter. Did you notice that when I was pulling the half hitches through, I was having to pull all of the rope through. That's quite a lot of effort, particularly of a long rope. So we're going to use a bite like we did with our overhand knot on a bite to make that a little bit easier. So this time, let's put it all out. We'll go back to the beginning. There we go. So we're going to go around the tree. Is that all the way around? No, nope. let's get back again. All the way around the tree. But instead of throwing all of the rope over, I'm gonna take a bite of the rope. Do you remember a loop of the rope? and put a loop over, the loop under, the bite under, and up through, over, under, and through. I've still got enough of my bite to do my second half hitch with a bite, over, under, and through. Now that saved me pulling all of my rope through. I've still got quite a tight rope. In fact, an even better shortcut it's my second half hitch. If I do that again, where well, I was going to go over, under, through, I can pull through just a bite and tighten it up against itself. And that way, at the end, when you want to put away your shelter really quickly, you can just pull the bite to undo it. Now, Claire and I like to have a competition to see who can get the tightest washing line. Claire's got a great technique for doing that where when we are pulling around the tree and doing our round the tree and it's it's a little bit loose if we put all the rope over and come back to ourselves and pull can you see what's happening Ba-doing! it's made it tighter so i'm going to go round the tree with my rope pulling all the time keeping it tight and you do it a second time don't you claire so we're going to put it back over again and pull back another time. Oh, my goodness me. Look how tight that is now. It's almost like a, a guitar string. So that way we've got a tighter washing line and you can finish off with your two half hitches over under through, over under through. Or two half hitches on a bite. Make my bite, hold it over, over, under, 
pull it back through against the tree with my second bite over under pull it back against the tree now remember we don't like loose ends so we can always fold that in half half it again so it's a bit shorter and then do a big overhand over under through and that just tidies that up out of the way and we've got a fantastic washing line that we can then get our tarp throw our tarp over and we can peg down the corners of our tarp now i'm not going to do that one today oh where are we there we go so on our next session in part four we'll look at some knots that help you adjust these corners so instead of just pegging them down maybe you want to adjust them depending on what you've got on the ground around you we've got some different ways of adjusting your knots so we'll do that next time so today what we learned the timber hitch so we go over and back under and then wrap it round three times and the round turn and two half hitches and if you want to make it a little bit easier instead of throwing all the rope over if you remember those half hitches you can fold and make a bite a little loop and do that so have a go at doing those get your washing lines going and when we do the next video we'll look at how you're going to put your tarp onto your washing line have a great time see you soon